Cancer is one of the leading causes of death. It is one of the world's most pressing problems to make progress against this disease. However, there is a technology that exists and that technology is still being improvised from time to time in order to stop cancer from progressing. This technology uses the benefits of charged subatomic particles or ions to treat cancer and delivers high energy X-rays or electrons to the regions of patient's tumor. This treatment can be designed in such a way that they destroy the cancer cells while sparing the surrounding normal tissue. That technology is none other than the linear accelerator or LINAC, the backbone of the radiotherapy treatment. In 1953 in London, the first LINAC-based radiation therapy for cancer treatment began with an 8MV machine built by Metropolitan Vickers. It was the first dedicated medical LINAC and the earliest LINAC-based radiation therapy. Henry Kaplan, an American radiologist who pioneered radiation therapy along with his team of researchers at Stanford University, California, developed a 6MV clinical LINAC which was installed in the Stanford Department of Radiology in 1954, treating its first patient in January 1956, at which time there were only seven clinical Linux in the world. In 1972, Peter Fassenden, PhD Professor of Radiation Oncologist Emeritus, continued Kaplan's early ambitions by exploring how to create linear accelerators that delivered their punch to tumor cells through two types of radiation. Working with Varian Medical System in cooperation of Palo Alto, his group helped to develop the first machine that combined both X-ray and electron treatment in treating cancer patients. In 1965, when Tun Omar Ong Yok Lin and Tun Tan Siu Sin were the Minister of Health and Finance of Malaysia, respectively, an allocation of Malaysian Ringgit 3 million was made for the establishment of the new Institute of Radiotherapy, Oncology and Nuclear Medicine at the Kuala Lumpur General Hospital. The equipment that was brought into the hospital included a Siemens Betatron that provided electron treatments ranging from 5 MeV to 43 MeV and two single energy 6 MeV linear accelerators. In the present, we have MR LINET that combines simultaneous radiation treatment and MRI. It helps to see what you treat, which will give clinicians greater confidence that they are precisely targeting the tumor during every treatment session. Not just that, we also have tomotherapy and cyberknife that track the position of the tumor in real time as it is developed to consider and verify the internal and interstitial displacement of the patient's organ during treatment. All of these are essential for developing personalized treatment regimen, improve efficacy, and reducing the exposure of surrounding half tissue to radiation. Proton treatment is a type of radiation therapy that employs small particles known as protons. Protons are effective cell kills. However, because of how protons transfer their energy, Proton treatment does not cause as much harm to healthy tissue as photon therapy. As a result, a larger dose of radiation may be directed towards the tumor while sparing normal healthy cells. The scientist Robert Wilson, who subsequently became the founder and the first director of the Fermi National Accelerator Laboratory advocated using protons for cancer therapy in 1946. The first patients were treated in nuclear physics research centers in the 1950s using non-dedicated accelerators. Because accelerators were not strong enough to allow protons to penetrate deep into the tissue, therapeutic users were first confined to a few regions of the body. 
advantages of protons therapy. First, target tumors and cancer cells with precision and minimal exit dose. Second, reduce overall toxicity. Third, reduce the probability of severity of short and long-term side effects on surrounding healthy tissues and organs. Fourth, precisely delivers an optimal radiation dose to the tumor. Fifth, can be used to treat recurrent tumors, even in patients who have already received radiations. Lastly, improve quality of life during and after treatment. Although Malaysia still does not have proton therapy at this time, we hope that proton therapy can be one of the modalities that can improve the quality of life of the community in Malaysia.